describes the current security situation in the state as worrisome. Majigiri reveals that the granddaughter of the slain party council chairman was also shot and killed by the bandits during the attack. The federal government has not exempted the academic staff union of universities ASU from the integrated payroll and personnel information system IPP is a platform being adopted to pay its workforce as widely reported by few national dailies it was widely reported by some national dailies that the federal government has bowed to pressures from ASU and exempted members of the union from the IPPs after a marathon meeting held between the government and ASU leadership. Rather, what was agreed at the end of the meeting was for the money owed ASU members between February and June, which referred to as the transition period, be paid under the platform that was earlier used to pay the president's compassionate COVID-19 payment within that period. When contacted for clarification, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ungige, said that there was nothing like exemption of ASU members from IPPs in the agreement reached at the meeting. The Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, has ordered that trucks and trailers should quit parking on the road in Ogiri as it is hampering the speedy completion of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The minister who gave this directive while inspecting the ongoing Lagos Ibado Expressway stressed that the federal government is ensuring the completion of the projects despite the paucity of funds confronting the nation. Governor's Office correspondent Tundi Olanua reports that the governor of Kwabiodun revealed that the Ogiri trailer park is currently being renovated and another one will be established close to the Shagamu interchange is reported. Lagos Ibadan Expressway is the busiest road network not only in Nigeria but in sub Saharan Africa, with an average of 50,000 vehicles plying per day, more than half of which are trucks and heavy duty vehicles. This underlines the reason why the federal government placed high premium on the road by constructing a 311 billion naira project using two contractors. It is a stakeholders' town hall meeting with the Minister of Works and Housing on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The meeting afforded the stakeholders the opportunity of asking questions, and this gives the minister the privilege of addressing the issues raised. Now, all of this is happening at the time when the price of oil has dropped to about $40 per barrel. So, this would have happened when Nigeria was much richer when oil was over $100 per barrel. But I bring to you very good news from President Buhari that even if oil drops to zero, he will do his best to complete this project. He said cooperation and sacrifice will be needed by stakeholders to ensure the timely completion of the project. If you want to run a fleet, then you must plan parking. If government helps you, government does so out of compassion. But you cannot run your business at the expense of the convenience and the livelihoods of millions of people. So money that is hard to find and road that has been difficult to build, you have already started pouring diesel on it. That is the beginning of the destruction of the road. And my appeal to you today is to immediately leave the room. Immediately. The governor of Ogun State, Prince Dakwabiodun, said the completion of the road will not only ease traffic, but improve the ease of doing business in the state. We have plans on their way to create a trailer park before the Shagamu interchange, just like the Seri Kiausa had suggested, believing that that trailer park, if enforced, will ensure that trailers, after a certain time, park at that trailer park before advancing towards the Ogiri trailer park. We are also rehabilitating the Ogiri trailer park because it has completely um, degenerated. He noted that it is high time they looked in the direction 
of alternative roads to Lagos Ibadan Expressway. This is exactly why this administration in Ogun State has embarked on the reconstruction of the Lagos Eper Road. We have ha we had to because we foresaw the fact that when this road is completed, it will not be enough to carry the amount of traffic that is now due to the population expression on that corridor. So we had to take over the responsibility of the federal government and actually embark on the construction of the Ekpe uh, Ejabode Road. That road should be completed by May next year. Trundi Olaniro, OGTV News. The current administration in Ogun State realizes that the competence of public office holders and the public service in general depends on the level of intellect and would do everything possible to improve their effectiveness and efficiency. The governor of Ogun State, Prince Dakwa Abiodun, stated this at the orientation workshop for public office holders held at Obax Complex, Okemos on Abeokuta. Governor's Office Correspondent Tundi Olanino reports that the governor urged them to learn to put measures in place to make policies, processes, and standards that will ease entry and participation of interested players. In this room are newly appointed chairmen and members of boards of agencies and parastatals of government for a retreat. The retreat is aimed at intimating them with their duties and roles of their offices, as well as give them possible ideas and innovations for optimal performance. Ogun State Governor has continued to demonstrate his commitment towards the efficient service delivery and development of Ogun State Public Service. And I must seek to acknowledge that granting approval for the workshop for the new public office holders is another practical representation of His Excellency's commitment towards providing necessary skills and conduciveness for the improved quality, increased productivity, and efficiency of the Ogun State Public Service. The Governor of Ogun State, Prince Dakabiodun, who spoke through his Chief of Staff, Alaji Sali Safolabi Shuaib, strongly believed that the retreat will facilitate the understanding of the mandate of the current administration in the state. He admonished the board members and the chairman to be ingenious and help in the fulfillment of the dreams and visions of their agencies in line with the Building Our Future Together agenda of the current administration. The board members are of the opinion that the retreat was necessary and timely. It's very necessary uh, because a lot of us uh, have not been public servants before. Uh, a lot of us are into statutory commissions where all the behavior and all the work is done by, uh, by the law. Uh, there's a law guiding uh, the way we sit, uh, the way we do our work. So it's essential before we start such a, a journey that we actually come for something like this. When will people have an idea of what they have to do in government? What will people, when will people have this kind of synergy you know, between the appointer and appointees? So this is very important. It's also very important because it determines the rights and responsibilities. Of course, it is also, you know, yeah. expose the limits of powers and authorities of various, you know, organizations vis-a-vis -vis their ministries. So it's very important. They promise to work tirelessly for the growth and development of their agencies and parastatals and Ogun State at large. Tunde Olanero, OGTV News. Following the current increase in the price of fuel and its rejection by both the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress, the federal government has summoned labour leaders to an emergency meeting later today. The meeting, which will commence at 7 in the evening, will be held at the Banquet Hall, Presidential Villa, Abuja. 
The Labour leaders said they have been duly informed about the emergency meeting. According to the Deputy Director and Head of Press and Public Relations, Federal Ministry of Labour and Employment, Charles Ackman, a meeting between the federal government and Labour was supposed to have been held on Monday, 28th September 2020, following the agreement signed between the two parties on the issue of oil price increase and electricity tariff hike, but could not hold. Both NLC and TUC have rejected the current pump price increase and demanded for immediate reversal. Amin Bryson death profile, inflation and unemployment. Nigeria, Africa's biggest economy, has entered in a second recession in five years as official figures showed that the economy shrank again in the third quarter of this year. This year's recession is the worst in 36 years as data obtained from the World Bank showed that the country's GDP dropped by 10.92% in 1983 and 1.2% 1 in 1984. The World Bank said in June that the collapse in crude oil prices coupled with the COVID-19 pandemic was expected to plunge the Nigerian economy into a severe recession, the worst since the 1980s. The HBS in its gross domestic product report for quarter three said the GDP, the broadest measure of economic prosperity, fell by 3.62% in the three months up till September. For the first time in more than three years, the Nigerian economy shrank in quarter two as the GDP fell by 6.10% compared with a growth of 1.87% in quarter one. Away from the shores of the country now, a defiant Donald Trump again falsely insisted he won re-election in his first public appearance for a week Friday as the U.S. president appeared increasingly isolated over his long short bid to stay in power, claiming against all odds that a path, path to victory remains viable and facing a pushback from fellow Republicans alarmed by his effort to overturn results Trump invited Michigan lawmakers to the White House as part of a bid to subvert the will of voters in key states. But if he expected them to take the president's line and publicly support efforts to overturn election results in Michigan, which Biden won by 155,000 votes, he was mistaken. The Republican legislators stood firm, saying they would honor the election's outcome. And to wrap up the news at 12, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Let's remind you that you can follow us on our social media platforms for more news and updates. We are on Apple, Roku, Windows, Blackberry, Facebook, and Android devices. You can also watch us live on our website, www.ogtv.com.ng. That's it on OGTV News Day News. Thank you for joining us on Bye Now.